Welcome and thanks for joining us. My guest today is Tej Tenmatam. He's Principal Solutions Engineer at Cloudera Government Solutions. Tej, good to have you with us. Good to be able to speak here, Tom. All right, let's set the scene here a little bit. This idea of AI seems to be coming into almost every information technology venture that's going on. And AI is closely associated with data. And a lot of agencies have data all over the place. So maybe talk about the integration that needs to happen with your AI and the hybrid environments people are operating in, in their data. Maybe set the scene for us. So as you see, right, like in the industry, like integrating AI applications in a hybrid data environment. So when I say hybrid, right, like the data could reside in an on-premise environment. The data could reside in the cloud. So that, in, in essence, that creates several hurdles. So some of the challenges, right, like when, when we talk about this uh, hybrid data environments, the first thing is the data silos, right? Data relevant to AI models are kind of scattered across like on-premise databases. You have data lakes in the cloud and uh, you have data in several departmental applications. So what this does is this fragmentation makes it difficult to gather and prepare the data needed for training and then deploying those uh, AI models. So that's one challenge. Then if you look about the data formats, right? Like the data could come in in different formats. It could be a CSV file, it could be a JSON. And then, so not only the data formats, there could be quality issues, right? Like there could be missing values. You have inconsistencies. So when you create AI models, Essentially, you need to be able to, like, it needs a clean and consistent data for optimal performance. So that necessitates that you are doing data wrangling processes across this varied different data sources. So that's, that's another challenge. Then comes the security and compliance side of things, right? Like, you have regulations like FedRAMP, you have regulations like HIPAA, and those regulations govern how sensitive government data is stored and accessed. So integrating AI with such data requires that you make sure that the data movement between the cloud and on-premise environments is done securely and also making sure that like you are adhering to those compliance requirements. So those are the challenges, right? So how do we overcome those challenges? So to give you an example, right? Like a Cloudera's data platform is, is kind of built to, to uh, overcome some of these challenges, right? Like it, it provides this unified data fabrics. So there are tools that provide security features like making sure this fine-grained role-based access control is there, making sure that data is encrypted, whether it is in transit or, or at rest. You need data quality tools, right? Like, so you are able to do data profiling, you're doing data cleaning, you are doing lineage tracking and so on. So a platform that enables this flexible deployment options, whether it is on-prem or cloud, uh, and to optimize that network performance and minimize latency issues and build those AI models uh, that you're trying to do, you need to overcome those challenges. and. Uh, these are some examples where like, uh, uh, we, we have done it successfully. Sure. And one of the big problems or challenges for your AI models is data quality. And data quality varies you know, from place to place, even within a given agency. So what can you do? What are some strategies to make sure that there's consistency in the grade of data, regardless of where it might be hosted, such that you can make sure your AI insights are accurate and, and useful to the agency? Yeah, you, you're right on, uh, Tom. So data quality issues, right? Like incomplete, missing or out data. So that outdated data, what happens is it reduces the accuracy as well as reliability of the AI models that you're building. So poor data quality and accessibility, it also leads to this biased and uh, inaccurate or underperforming AI models. And uh, another issue could be that like, if you have insufficient or inconsistent data, so then uh, then you cannot like uh, validate and deploy the robust AI models that you're trying to build. So 
one thing that needs to be taken care of is this effective data management, right? Like you need to have a unified data strategy that not only encompasses like data integration, data quality, data governance, and data security across your different data sources as well as platforms. So you need to have that unified data strategy and then also establish a centralized data hub that can provide a single source of truth. So you need a single source of truth, enable data lineage, and then also support data discovery and how you provide access and how you share the data. So you need tools such as like how Cloudera does with uh, real-time processing with tools like NiFi, Kafka, and Flink, which are integrated into the ecosystem. And then uh, uh, some of the capabilities, right, like data cataloging and metadata management capabilities, what they do is they enable their data discovery, access, and sharing so, uh, so you can actually build uh, data trust and integrity. It almost sounds like an abstraction layer so that the data infrastructure, the physical infrastructure of the data, which is real, is not in the way of what it is you're actually trying to do with the data. Exactly. All right. And so if you can scale your data systems across hybrid clouds and your own environments, how do you scale your AI systems so that they keep up with the size and, and breadth that you need? because the volumes, the complexity, as you describe them, can get pretty high. Yeah, and we are dealing with that, right? Like exponential data growth. Uh, with that also comes increased data complexity. And then you need there are need uh, requirements for real-time processing analytics. So implementing, uh, so how do we address that, right? Like this, the data volumes and complexity that comes with the, uh, scaling the data. So. Uh, some some design considerations that needs to be taken care of. So first thing, implementing a distributed architecture. So that is extremely important. Like with commodity off the shelf hardware, you need to be able to implement a distributed architecture to handle data growth. So how do we do that? So there are like scalable storage solutions like uh, Apache HDFS, Hadoop file system, uh, for, for especially for block stores. And then you have uh, data that archival data or, or data could sit in an object store. So we have Apache Ozone. So this, those are distributed scalable storage solutions. And then uh, for uh, compute intensive applications, how do we scale them? So there are cloud native technologies, right? Like Kubernetes is the go-to standard for elasticity and scalability. So you need a data platform which is built on the next generation cloud native technologies, such as uh, 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 like based on Kubernetes. And then um, also uh, implementing data pipelining and streaming for real-time processing. So these are the some uh, like some design considerations that you need to take care of. And then comes uh, uh, like a, a platform that can actually provide not only uh, the same, the, the, the design consideration that I was talking earlier, but do it in a on-premise environment as well as in the cloud. And you have multiple cloud offerings, right? Like you need a platform that can actually scale uh, on AWS, on Azure or GCP, or in your own on-premise environment, right? So multi-cloud strategy, ability to easily scale is, is very important. Um, Tom here, I would like to give you an example, right? Like uh, uh, we have a DOD command um, that uses Cloudera's data platform uh, they manage uh, data from different sensors on aircraft deployed at multiple locations. So by develop by kind of like uh, by leveraging this is in production uh, scalable Cloudera's data platforms uh, scalable architecture. They trained an AI model to d predict uh, equipment failure in real time. So that actually has resulted in tremendous cost savings, costly downtimes. Uh, they, they were able to uh, uh, solve that. And then they essentially like it improved the aircraft efficiency, right? So those are the things that you need to take into consideration. Yeah, and you point something there that's a real issue. And sometimes agencies have the luxury of doing their data analytics, their AI types of development separate from production. 
the case history you just described is real-time analytics as it's happening, taking data from sensors and so forth, aircraft. So maybe discuss how you make sure your AI technology is scaled or otherwise architected to make sure that it can support real-time analytics and not just post facto when you've got the luxury of time, latency doesn't matter that much and so forth. Yeah, so so one example was was uh, was the aircraft maintenance uh, use case uh, that that is real time analytics, right? So there are other use cases also, like which is extremely important, right? Like uh, to to be in a hybrid environment. So a couple of other use cases that I want to talk about uh, would be that like fraud detection, right? So uh, AI driven real time analytics, like you you can actually quickly identify and respond to fraudulent activities in sectors like banking finance, right? Uh, and analyzing transaction data as it is happening. So that's one use case. Another use case could be supply chain optimization, right? So in manufacturing and, re and retail, right? Real-time analytics, you can actually monitor supply chain operations. Uh, so, so you can immediately identify delays and then unexpected demand changes, you can, you can do that. So there could be other use cases within public sector, right? Like real-time traffic analysis and then AI-powered real-time crime prediction for public safety. So those are some some real use cases. And uh, the way the DOD command that I was talking about earlier, the use case, right? So a set of technology choices that were that went into that uh, uh, that that solution was that uh, making sure that data is real-time data is being uh, ingested using tools like NiFi and Apache Kafka, and then using tools like Link for stream processing and tools like Apache Spark for real-time data analytics. So you have this tooling that enables you to do real-time analytics, and uh, as the as the data as the data is arriving, right, which is kind of crucial for real-time analytics. And this is what uh, we have done, and been uh, we have been very successful with this approach. And in many of these examples, especially in the federal sector, there is the need to make sure that you're protecting privacy that everything is done securely when you talk about, say, crime uh, detection patterns or anti-fraud types of activities, you do run into data privacy issues. How do you address the privacy issues, security issues when doing all of this? Yeah, so so mainly privacy, right? Like uh, you are looking at like uh, uh, the main concerns could be that uh, how, how we solve that. So first thing is you need to ensure that uh, you have uh, a proper anonymization techniques, right? So that uh, uh, you are masking the data uh, so that like the right people have right access to the data itself. And then with AI models, uh, it kind of uh, becomes a black box nature sometimes, right? Like uh, you, you need to be careful so that uh, you are like, if you don't understand like uh, uh, the fairness and potential bias, uh, then it's, it's a problem. Uh, and then another privacy concern could be the user con consent, right? Like obtaining clear and informed user content for data collection is extremely important. So those are like like some privacy concerns. And then thinking about like security concerns, right? So hybrid environments, they kind of introduce some new attack vectors for malicious actors. So you need to take care of that. And then, um, AI models themselves can be vulnerable to manipulation. So you need to uh, make sure that uh, managing access to sensitive data is, is done correctly. So how do we address these security concerns and privacy concerns is to make sure that we are implementing a zero trust security model. So what that means is that like, no matter which user or role or the application, you'd start with a baseline that you do not trust anyone. So your platform and your data platform needs to make sure that like you are implementing that zero trust security model. And then um, we need to make sure that uh, we are doing regular security audits. We are doing penetration testing. We are doing data anonymization, right? And masking techniques. Uh, we need to make sure uh, transparency and explainability is, is, is part of the AI decision-making. Uh, we need to establish clear data governance and privacy policies. And, and, and the last thing, which is more important, right? Like providing training and awareness programs for employees. So those are the main ways to actually address those concerns. 
All right, let's summarize it here a little bit then. What should organizations do to manage and govern data across these multiple sources and multiple physical platforms to make sure that the AI itself is produced in an efficient way? Making sure that uh, the data that you are ingesting from, whether it is in an on-premise environment, in a public cloud environment, right? Uh, making sure that... Uh, uh, the data is ingested uh, easily, and then making sure that uh, uh, the fine grain access controls are, are in place so that uh, you are uh, controlling who can access data, under what conditions, and what operations they can perform. That is extremely important. And then making sure the data security, right? Making sure the data is encrypted at rest and in transit. And uh, and the other security and governance frameworks, right? So they, they need to be uh, deployed uh, uh, to be successful. And uh, Cloudera as a company, um, uh, CGSI, uh, Cloudera Government Solutions Inc., uh, we, we support many of the DOD agencies as well as uh, IC customers, uh, uh, as well as state and local customers um, in, in, in solving this, uh, these challenges and in, in actually uh, many successful solutions out there uh, that we can further talk about. And in the couple of minutes we have remaining, maybe tell us where you think this is all headed. What should we expect in the near future with respect to managing hybrid data environments and AI? So the the future, I, I would think, uh, would be that focus on this explainability AI, right? Uh, understanding how AI models arrive at decisions. So that is very crucial for building trust and then ensuring fairness and then mitigating bias in AI outputs is extremely important. Uh, so that's that's the future trend. And then think about rise of this generative AI, right? So you have ChatGPT and, and Gemini and uh, Meta and other uh, players out there. So advancements in AI is enabling the creation of entirely new data sets, right? Not just text now, there are images, code for various applications. So, so the rise of generative AI, that's, that's a future trend. And then responsibly AI development is extremely important in this, uh, in this future trends. So ethical considerations are becoming a paramount in AI development and deployment. So organizations uh, such as yours need to be mindful of this potential societal harms and strive for this unbiased AI solutions. All right, some great insight today. I want to thank today's guest. We've been speaking with Tej Tenmatam. He's Principal Solutions Engineer at Cloudera Government Solutions. I'm Federal Drive host Tom Temin. You're listening to Federal News Network. Let's go back to the studio now for more on the industry exchange data.